So I have to tell you, on my bucket list was to do a TED Talk. And as I'm standing here right now on this beautiful red square, I'm thinking, what in the world was I thinking? <laughs> How many of you have seen The Wizard of Oz? Great. So true confessions. As a little girl, I probably watched The Wizard of Oz over a hundred times. But recently, I watched it for the first time as an adult. And I have to tell you, I was so amazed at the number of true life leadership lessons that are woven throughout that story. Now again, as a little girl, I probably didn't notice because I was in awe of the pageantry of the show. And quite frankly, I was scared to death of that wicked witch. So the show begins with Dorothy and her family taking shelter from a tornado that is threatening to destroy their family farm. During the storm, Dorothy is hit in the head and falls into a deep sleep. Fast forward to her waking up, understanding that she's, she doesn't know where she is, but she's pretty sure she's not in Kansas anymore. She meets a quite diverse group of characters, the Munchkins, who inform Dorothy that she has landed in Oz. Oz is an amazing place, and the Munchkins inform her that they are thrilled with her arrival. The reason they are thrilled is her home has landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, killing her instantly. Now, as you can imagine, her sister, the Wicked Witch of the West, is not pleased and not a very big fan. But she meets a really nice witch, Galinda, who informs her that the ruby slippers she is now wearing will keep her safe, understanding that the only way for her to get back home is to take the yellow brick road to the Emerald City to meet the Wizard of Oz, she is off. Now at this point in the show, I'm starting to understand through my adult lens that this, The Wizard of Oz is really more than just a wonderful movie. Think about what Dorothy must have been thinking when she met those munchkins. Man, they sure didn't look like anybody that she knew in Kansas. Which I think leads us to our first life lesson. And that is, just because someone doesn't look like you, doesn't mean that they don't have great ideas or add tremendous value. Dorothy listens, and she trusts that what they propose would be a good next step. But I have to be honest with you. My favorite life, life lesson of the whole show is around those ruby slippers. And I'm pretty sure the life lesson here is, if you wear great shoes, you can do anything. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably not right. So Dorothy travels, Dr Dorothy goes to the Emerald City and understands that if she's to be successful, she needs trust. So the reality is one of the most significant life lessons probably of the whole show is built around trust. How many times in your own life have you thought about if, if you could trust someone, you would have a straighter, quicker path to making your own goals. Ever taken the longer route and realized that you took the long route because you didn't trust someone and then all of a sudden realized that you would have been better off had you not done that? Yeah, me too. Dorothy takes others along with her to the Emerald City. As a young girl, I assume she did that because she was just really nice. But as I looked at this through my new adult lens, it hit me. How many times in our own life could we have not only needed our own help, but helped others along the way if we just would have brought them along? And so it is with Dorothy. Her first meeting is with the Scarecrow. Now, the Scarecrow informs Dorothy that if he only had a brain, he would be 
more complete, and quite frankly, the crows would stop picking on him. Do you realize that we all have a little bit of scarecrow within us? How many times in your own career have you thought, if I were only just a little bit smarter, I would be more successful and I would be more respected in my proven craft? As is true in life, the scarecrow was allowing his own insecurities to get the best of him and therefore not performing his job up to par. So how do we solve this? Well, we're off to see the wizard. Our next character is a wonderful man. Dorothy and the Scarecrow are getting along famously when all of a sudden they, become, they come upon another lost soul, the Tin Man. Now the Tin Man has been in the rain and unfortunately he cannot move and he can barely speak. Dorothy proceeds to oil all of his joints. Once he gets his faculties about him, he explains to Dorothy that he wants a heart. He understands that if he just had love, his life would be complete. How many times in your own life have you thought, if I only felt more love, if I felt love, I would feel more fulfilled? Everyone in life seeks that special someone that you can share life's challenges and successes with, much like our friend the Tin Man. Now I'm going to be honest, my favorite character is next, the Cowardly Lion. He wants to assume his place as king of the forest, but lacks the courage to do so. He has the breeding, he has the lineage, but he lacks the courage to assume his given leadership role in life. So the team assures him the wizard can help. So as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about the thousands of people who have walked through my door. Many of them were incredibly capable, but they lacked the courage to try, much like our friend the lion. Others had great technical competencies, or the brain, but they lacked the emotional intelligence, or the heart, to move up the corporate ladder. And still others, quite honestly, were lost and simply needed someone to help them to find their way home, or in this case, to find a new career. After 21 years in executive search, I know one thing to be true. That is, all of you have natural gifts. It is not something that you trained yourself to or were educated to, it's just something that is in your DNA. Remember that young man in high school who was good at every sport and it seemed like he never even had to practice? That's a DNA gift. Same is true for the girl who never cracked a book and got straight A's. Yeah, I hated her too. <laughs> but here's an interesting fact. Every single one of you have natural DNA gifts. The true trick in life is figuring out what your natural gifts are and you will be wildly more successful in your career and quite frankly in life, much like our friends who are going to see the Wizard of Oz are searching for. So how do you decide or figure out what your natural gifts are? So as a starting point, I would suggest this. Make two lists. The first list is all the things you are passionate about, all the things you really love. There's nothing you shouldn't write down. The second list is all the things you're good at. Love to play piano? Write that down. Like to cook? Write that down too. Once you've taken, taken a good amount of time to compose those, both lists, blend the list together and see where you have common threads. And that will be the beginning of you discovering your own life's natural gifts but I digress. Back to our story. So Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion arrive at the Emerald City. They are prepped to meet their new leader. So once they are appropriately groomed and attired, they are introduced to the great and powerful Oz. He is terrifying and not a kind man at all. Or at least that's what 
he wants them to believe. The, the great and powerful Oz gives them, at this point, what would seem like an almost impossible task. If he is to help them to attain their goals, they must bring back the broom of the wicked witch. Now the lion is ready to bolt, the tin man is quite miffed, and Dorothy, always the collaborative one, rallies the team together to say, together we can be successful. They meet many obstacles. Dorothy is captured by the witch. The scarecrow is set on fire. Yet despite these odds, they throw a pail of water on the wicked witch and she melts. They grab the broom and they're back off to see the wizard. It was, as I was thinking about this and thinking about our own lives, how many times have you been challenged by tasks that feel seemingly impossible? The reality is, if you stay the course, you can be successful. I remember as a little girl, my father saying to me, nothing in life worth having comes easy. At that moment in the show, I knew exactly what he meant. But he also told me, if you stay the course and work through all those challenges, you will win. So of course, our team delivers the broom to the Wizard of Oz. And he looks at them and he is not going to honor his commitment. At that point, I also remember my dad saying, life is not fair. But Dorothy, a woman ahead of her time, I might add, stands up for her rights. But the true hero here is Toto, Dorothy's dog, who pulls back the curtain to reveal an unassuming man who simply repeats, ignore the man behind the curtain. Well, as we all know, ultimately he was caught and he discontinues the facade. The wizard, who wanted people to believe he was this terrifying leader, was a kind and gentle man who really did want what was right. How many times have you misread someone in your life? I know for a fact I have. The wizard approaches the scarecrow and awards him an honorary degree. Immediately, his body posture straightens, and he speaks with great brilliance. He approaches the tin man and gives him a heart, and he begins to cry. For the first time, he feels love. Then he listens to the lion, and he restores his courage. At least, that's what I thought as a little girl. The story continues with the wizard, a failed balloon ride, and Galinda. And at this moment, I would tell you one of the most profound lessons came from Galinda when she looked at Dorothy and she said, my dear, everything that all of you have been searching for was inside each of you all along. I thought about that. And you know what? It's so true. Everything you want is inside of you right now. You just have to try. I'm pretty certain Henry Ford was watching The Wizard of Oz when he said, whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. You just have to have the courage to try. And in the end, we see Dorothy clicking her heels, saying there's no place like home. I would argue with you that that is the best life lesson of all.